And as Onya Kachi mentioned, we have uh, our second poet of the day now, who's going to take center stage. And I'd like to introduce her briefly. She is our poet, poetic chronicler of the day. So she's been sitting in throughout panel one and panel two. Um, and she's been commissioned for us by Poet in the City. Uh, her name is Mumtaza Mehri. And Mumtaza is the former Young People's Laureate for London and a columnist in residence at the San Francisco Museum of Modern Arts Open Space. Mumtaza has been listening to our speakers um, in both panels and really we wanted to give her the last word. So I'm going to say my thank yous and my summing up here. Um, a huge thank you to all our excellent speakers. We have had a truly stellar list of speakers here and for all their contributions, a huge thank you for everybody who's joined in both via Zoom as, as well as the YouTube link. Um, and we will end this session and both panels after Mumtaza has finished her Poetic Chronicle and we will finish recording once this Poetic Chronicle has been read out loud. Um, so Mumtaza, it's over to you now. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, dear. Um, I'd like to just be thankful and just uh, express my gratitude for the perspectives that everybody's shared today. And I've learned so much. Um, this is a sort of um, a matter or, or like a concerns that I've had burgeoning interest in for a very long time. Um, but this has just really elevated my own understanding of it and it's given me so many different um, wormholes to go down. Um, to hear it from your perspective and also to hear everyone's research has been really an honor. Um, and it's uh, no pressure for me, but I have to end with a poem. And I hope that um, in some way you can see some of what you may have mentioned or some of the points that have been brought up reflected in the poem, but also it can sort of encapsulate um, the, these sort of like greater issues in a, in a way that speaks to some kind of, I would hope, essential truth um, that can be found in the poem. So the poem, which I, literally finished a minute ago so it's uh, hot off the press um the poem is called behind the glass a contestation and it goes a little something like this once we thought poets to be the custodians of the past the narrators of its labyrinthine passages we wanted to sit at the feet of those who spun commonality from the endless thread of interpretation we thought we needed someone else to do the work of remembering. We did not trust ourselves. That was how we were trained. Knowledge was a wielded weapon. We felt its dull weight lacking somewhere in the twist of gut. What do you call this searching to be undone? A younger me, none the wiser, sought the quicker route there, the hum of the 98 bus towards the pillared vaults of a museum a national one, is chalked white of grand design and delusions. I let the atrium swallow me, guide my prickling curiosity towards the collections bearing the names that so easily tumbled like fresh water from my tongue. I studied the crescent-shaped platform, a missing rib, an etched geometry carved into this fine-grained wood. Cool air stung the cheek, distracted from the angled circumference of an object's base, the gravitational pull of its simmering history. Hagar, the description reads, a traditional headrest, found, acquired, Somalia, category, sub-Saharan Africa. Destinies collapsed together into a small Gothic typeface, spelled right, at least. Category as cage, confine, enclosure. One acquisition borrowed from another, the first rupture, the first disappearing given a date of 1954, six restless years before what we have come to know as independence, a process still fiercely unfurling, like the starred flags foremothers waved with their outspread arms, as gold bracelets slid down the silk of their wrists. Six restless years before the union of trusts and territories, the stitching together of imposed borders, of drawn fault lines made by those who would claim a river for themselves, name it after a queen who would die before seeing it. I think of the nomad who rested his head here, the pillowed halo of his hair, her neck against its single column splendor. At night, it stopped slumber, guarded against the night's uncertainties, 
became a symbol of a people who had every reason to sleep with one eye open. The description is bare, bleached of a context learned at the aching feet of grandmothers. I am armed with a knowledge I do not know what to do with. By the glaring exit sign, a jostle for donations, would my dropped pennies liberate me of my predictable longings, embellish the display with kinder sentences. Years later, in another moment of suspension, I scavenge for further scatterings in a university library, inspecting the parameters of a country, a continent's fracture between its shelves. Again, I have come here to be undone, expecting to undo something else. My own lightheaded arrogance magnified by the singular promise of Rome's afternoon sun trickling through the stained windows. Neutrality taunts. I am pinning down the butterfly, prodding at an archive which has no living place for us, a place beyond the parody of shrunken heads, the fragile bones of children, a femur of a bo bombing victim here, a two-handled jade cup there. Objects of the objectified, they exceed their life here. Who refuses to share the monopoly of memory? Oxford, London, Philadelphia, Paris, is the universal elastic enough to bear the fullness of grief? The exotic is full-throated in its silence. It belongs to the whole world, meaning it doesn't belong to you, meaning nothing belongs to you. The rules are not yours to play by. The well is empty, the cast set, cape to Cairo, molded in the appetites of a primly grasping Victorian age of Maxim gums and parasols the daintiness of practice violence and infinite greed, the roll call of revolving characters, businessman, slaver, missionary, explorer, adventurer, cartographer, soldier, Napoleon's art advisor transformed into a museum director, Egyptophile spoils of occupation, chroniclers of Caesars of land and mind. Who rewrites the script, gives objects new lives to breathe, new words to speak? What can we gain by giving something up? Is it a loss if it flows both ways? Or is it something closer to justice? Thank you for having me.